Tesla just made it to the top spot, leaving Toyota and Honda eating its dust. And the real reason behind Honda and Toyota's downfall is definitely not what you think. Honda and Toyota caused their own destruction, and if they continue to lag in the EV races, they just might go bankrupt in the coming decade unless they rapidly shift gears. Don't believe it? Well, keep watching. Honda and Toyota are too late for the EV evolution, and Tesla isn't the only reason behind this. In 2022, the Toyota Corolla emerged as the best-selling car model in the world, selling over 1.12 million units. Toyota's RAV4 took the second spot, while Honda's CR-V was in the sixth spot with 600,000 units sold. Fast forward to 2023. Tesla took up the top spot, selling over 336,753 units in the first quarter alone, dethroning both Toyota and Honda. Market movements are sending shockwaves. Tesla's market cap rocketed from $388 billion at the end of 2022 to a whopping $601 billion by March 2023, while Toyota saw a nerve-wracking 14% plunge. Are we witnessing the death throes of Honda and Toyota's glory? Have they missed the EV train, thereby signing their own slow, painful death sentence? How exactly did this happen? And is there any hope left for those who are late to the EV party? Fasten your seatbelts as we answer all of your questions in these 10 action-packed minutes. We promise not to waste your time. Playing catch up in the EV revolution. Ah, the electric vehicle market, a modern day revolution that's on a crusade to topple the age old combustion engine. So here's the thing, folks. In 2022, global EV sales reached 5.4 million, up a staggering 109% from 2021. By 2025, experts predict that the number will balloon to 14 million. The future is electric, but not everyone got the memo. Honda and Toyota, two Japanese giants that once led the pack, are now having to compete with the newcomers of the industry. Their strategy has been simple, cautiously dip their toes in the EV waters while champion their hybrid models like the Toyota Prius and Honda CR-V. However, by 2023, Honda only had a measly 2% share in the global EV market, while Toyota was faring slightly better with 5%. Meanwhile, their counterparts, Tesla and BYD, had 17% and 13% respectively. Quite the role reversal, wouldn't you say? But why, oh, why are Honda and Toyota late to the party? Well, it's not because they didn't receive the invitation. They were just reluctant to RSVP. Both companies have for years invested heavily in hybrid and fuel cell technology, arguing that EVs weren't viable due to the limited range and lack of charging infrastructure. In 2010, Toyota's then vice president, Takeshi Uchiyamada, famously said, the current capabilities of electric vehicles do not meet society's needs, while Honda echoed similar sentiments. Moreover, Toyota and Honda's obsession with hydrogen fuel cell technology played a part in their leg. Toyota released the Mirai and Honda the Clarity, both hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, with Toyota selling fewer than 11,000 units since 2014 and Honda's sales figures being equally underwhelming. In the same time frame, Tesla delivered over 1.3 million EVs. Talk about backing the wrong horse. Toyota's war against EVs over the years. It seems a bit counterintuitive that Toyota, the global automotive giant that pioneered the green car movement with the introduction of the Prius hybrid back in 1997, is now struggling to keep pace with the EV revolution. The automaker didn't mass market a single all-electric product until 2020, lagging far behind rivals like Mitsubishi, Nissan, and BMW. Even when Toyota finally did introduce an EV, the CHR SUV, it was initially exclusive to Chinese consumers. The company's first globally available zero-emissions vehicle, the BZ4X, faced a safety recall and sold just a few hundred models in the US, a small fraction of the 800,000 total EVs sold in the country in 2020. Toyota's reluctance to go all in on EVs has been met with increasing criticism, especially as competitors like Hyundai continue to gain market share with their more successful clean car offerings like the Ioniq 5. Akio Toyota, the ex-head of Toyota and a descendant of the company's founding family, has consistently expressed skepticism about EVs, favoring hybrids and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles instead. When it comes to lobbying and marketing, Toyota hasn't exactly been an EV champion either. A concerned parent in Japan wrote about how Toyota distributed pamphlets to all the country's schools about its eco-friendly vehicles, yet failed to mention zero-emission EVs. 
Then, in 2022, Toyota lobbied the Japanese government to place hybrids on an equal footing with all electric cars for government incentives and support, despite hybrids' reliance on gasoline. Astonishingly, despite being the largest automotive manufacturer in the world, Toyota doesn't even make the top 20 when it comes to EV production. In terms of raw numbers, Toyota's lag behind the EV trend becomes even more apparent. While Toyota has been the largest automotive manufacturer worldwide, their position in the EV market is significantly lower. In 2022, Toyota had reportedly only sold around 14,000 BEVs globally, which would annualize to less than 20,000. This is dwarfed by companies like Tesla and BYD, who produce 1,310,000 and 911,140 BEVs respectively in the same year. It's worth noting that Toyota has started taking steps to realign itself in the EV market, such as developing dedicated EV platforms and announcing new models. However, their time frame appears to be later than most, with a full EV range not expected until 2027 or 2028. By this time, given the current growth rate of the global EV market, Toyota may face significant market share loss. It's now apparent that these automotive titans were a tad mistaken, and they're attempting to make amends. Honda aims to ensure 40% of its sales come from EVs and fuel cell vehicles by 2030, ramping that up to 100% by 2040. Meanwhile, Toyota has launched its BZ, or Beyond Zero series, pledging to introduce 15 new battery EV models by 2025. In 2023 alone, they're investing $13.5 billion in battery development. But is this just too little too late? Honda's confusing EV strategy. Honda's current EV strategy has been characterized as somewhat confusing with multiple paths of action that include partnerships with GM and Sony, as well as their internal e-architecture development for future vehicles. This complexity of Honda's approach reflects the automaker's reluctance to embrace EVs, having been largely focused on hybrids until recently. Honda CEO Toshihiro Miibe acknowledged the previous focus, saying, Until five years back, our strategy mainly was that the business would be established mainly around hybrid technologies by 2030. That was what we were anticipating. However, Miibe pointed out the shift in the industry in the past few years. But in the last five years, battery EVs in terms of the regulations of the EU and the United States, well, there is a more positive attitude towards BEVs. Despite the relatively slow start, Honda is now making strides to consolidate and streamline its efforts. The automaker recently announced a significant global reorganization, creating a new division dubbed the Electrification Business Development Operations to spearhead its transformation into a digital and electric future. This consolidation aims to simplify Honda's EV business strategy and expedite its product development, extending beyond vehicles to include motorcycles and other power products. But you might be wondering why has Honda been slow off the starting line when it comes to EVs? Part of the explanation lies in the success of its hybrid technology. Honda brought the first hybrid to the US and as a result, Japanese companies like Honda felt less urgency to transition to fully electric lineups, particularly as their hybrids gained significant market penetration. However, Miba recognizes that Honda must aim for zero emissions, not just low emissions, as he outlined Honda's new goals. 40% of its sales to be zero emissions cars by 2030, 80% by 2035, and 100% by 2040. Honda's strategy now involves partnerships to bolster its EV production capabilities. It has joined forces with GM to produce two EVs based on GM's Ultium battery platform. Miba explained why GM was chosen for collaboration, stating, Honda has discussed partnerships with various auto companies and, when it comes to the question of all of them, why GM, one reason is that if we compare the company's size on a global basis, we are similar. And we are similar in technology as well. So we thought that this will probably be a good partner to do a 50-50 partnership together with. Furthermore, the corporation is taking part in its own EV development initiatives. It is actively investing in solid-state lithium-ion batteries, a potentially revolutionary advancement in the field. Shinji Aoyama, Honda's global officer in charge of electrification, pointed out, practically there's not much difference there when comparing Ultium battery technology and Honda's partnership with LG Energy Solutions. Honda sees its competitive edge in solid-state lithium-ion batteries, which are deemed the next big leap for batteries, as these allow for smaller packaging, lighter weight, and higher overall energy density. As for the timeline, Aoyama stated, a pilot production line will be operational in spring 2024, with solid-state batteries making it to Honda products sometime in 2028 or 2029 if all goes to plan. 
To maintain its brand identity, Honda is also focusing on developing electric sports cars, with at least two in the pipeline. We are rushing on, pushing on with our development work so that we can come up with fun ways to drive vehicles for the new era as soon as we can, Miba said. However, capturing the signature Honda driving experience without a traditional gas engine is a challenge Honda is committed to overcoming. Critics argue that Honda's strategy is too vague and lacks an immediate push for EV adoption, relying heavily on hybrids and fuel cell vehicles. Toyota's approach seems more assertive, but there's skepticism about the market's willingness to adopt their EVs, considering the competitors' several-year head start. There's no denying that Honda and Toyota have a monumental task ahead. If they don't accelerate their EV strategies, they risk falling further behind. Remember Nokia and Kodak? Giants can fall, and only time will tell how these brands catch up to Tesla. If you've made it this far, we applaud your attention. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more auto updates.